Oh, what an opening. That was that was amazing. If everybody is not up and jumping right now, wow, praising the Lord, falling out your seat, just in awe. Imagine how that is going to sound when we're in heaven, praising the Lord like that, just throwing our hands up in awe and all singing in unison. What a wonderful sight. Amen. Let me turn y'all's attention over to Psalms 150, verses 1, 2, and 6. And it reads, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty firmament, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us bow. Father God, we give you thanks, Lord, for another day, Lord God. You have made a new day. We're here. We're, we're praising you, Lord. We're, we're holding our hands up high. We're loving you. We're thanking you. And we're in awe of you, Father. Such a merciful and gracious God. Such a loving God. Such a compassionate God. Such a mighty God. We thank you, Father, for bringing us all here today and allowing us to just be in awe of you and praise you and worship you and magnify your holy name, Father, for who you are, what you do, what you're about, everything you've created, the breath that you put in our lungs. That's your breath, Father. We'll praise you with it. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor. We ask that you just fill him up, Father, with your Holy Spirit as he relays your word to us today, Father. Let us receive it with open hearts, open minds, and let us to apply it to our lives, Father God. Let it to take deep root in our heart and in our soul and help us to reflect it in this world that needs you so bad, that needs to be seeking you. Help us to allow them to see you through us day by day. We thank you again, Father, for this time. We thank you for the, uh, the gathering of the saints today. And I just pray for all my brothers and sisters right now that you may bless them with your mighty word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. 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 I'll tell you that. Uh, worship experience was something wasn't it god yeah god is just so good and and his blessings and his mercies endure forever so good morning to everybody good to have you uh in fellowship with us this morning on this second sunday of the month of uh december this is the last second sunday that we will experience in this year, amen. God has brought us a mighty long way and I thank him for his faithfulness. And so uh, it's good to have and see my brother Orlando tuned in with us uh, this morning. God bless you, brother. Um, Sister Sandra, good to have you on uh, with us this morning as well. And to all of our brothers and sisters uh, that, uh, hey brother, and to all of our brothers and sisters who are joining in with us on this morning uh, to celebrate the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I want to just ask this morning, if you can, uh, if you could turn your cameras on so I could see your face, if, 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 it's, if that's all right. Amen. So I could see who I'm preaching to and, uh, and just be able to uh, look you in the eye as I give you this good news. Uh, from the Lord uh, on high. And so uh, before I get into uh, the service, the sermon today, I just want to make a couple of announcements uh, so that we will be able to uh, put into our uh, calendar. On uh, December the 23rd, uh, I put in, it into the group me, so you may have seen it already. On, on uh, December the 23rd, that's a Saturday, they will be doing like a Christmas party for Miss Donna. Those of you who know Miss Donna, she's at a living facility off of Orem. And we have uh, been 
her spiritual care uh, or covering uh, for over a year now. And so I put that in the uh, group me and I want to invite all of us uh, to be a part of that, to join me on that Saturday, join First Lady and I on that Saturday. Um, I hope that's that's not y'all women's thing or anything, is it? Okay. So um, join me on that Saturday, asking the ushers to join me, to connect team, to definitely join me uh, on that. Uh, on the flyer, it does have what to wear and the type of gifts that we could uh, bring her. And so uh, uh, please uh, associate with us on this. Uh, the second thing is on December 24th, Christmas Eve, uh, we will be fellowshipping in person at um, Disciples Fellowship Church, uh, the church where we have the, the Disciples Christian Fellowship Church, where we have the baptismal services there. So we will be in person. So we want to invite everybody to join us um, in person for that service, Christmas Eve. We will have a Christmas celebration and we want to invite all of all you, of you uh, to, uh, to join. Go ahead and, go ahead and mute. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, to join us in person for uh, that fellowship, amen. So we're looking forward to seeing you, invite your family, invite your friends to come out. Our children will be uh, presenting. I, I pray that the children will be presenting on that Sunday as well, leading us in worship and whatever other presentations that they may have. So come out. If you want your child to be a part of it as well, please see Sister Dovey uh, so that they could connect you with the rest of the kids. So now, with nothing else, let us get into the uh, word for today. I want to recall your attention to the second chapter of the gospel according to Luke. And just like last Sunday, I want to keep it very simple. Amen. Just keep it simple and share with you a, a, a reflection message uh, for Christmas I given up a long time ago trying to find something new and something fresh to say about these uh, Christmas uh, passages. And so for me, it's not about finding what's new in it, but it's about just remembering the old and putting it into practice so that we will have the proper perspective of Christmas. And what I like about preaching these sermons prior to Christmas is so it already starts to condition our minds on how we should be as believers. Last week, we talked about making room for Jesus. And I pray that each of you have began to find some room for Jesus Christ in your heart, in your life, in your day-to-day -day schedule. Put Jesus on your calendar. Amen. Put him in your daily routine. Matter of fact, start with him and end with him in your daily routine. Amen. You got seven days a week. Give Jesus a part of each and every day of your life. Amen. And so let us look at Luke chapter two, verse eight through 18. I don't want to be before you long. Luke two, eight to 18, those are your scriptures. And it reads as follows. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared 
with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began to say one to another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found, found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been said to them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearing and readers and doers of his great word. Amen. In the old days, as you recall, the newspaper was the popular way of delivering the daily news. They had what they called back then uh, newspaper street vendors. I don't know if y'all remember that, but they, they were called newspaper street vendors who carried newspapers at their stands outside, some were inside. And even some vendors would put newspaper into a sack and then they would ride around on their bikes throughout the neighborhood delivering the daily news from house to house. And every now and then, whenever something out of the ordinary took place uh, in the world or in the area, uh, they would print an extra addition to the regular news. And to make sure that the customers would purchase the extra addition, the person at the newspaper stand or the vendor who's riding around in the bike on the bike tossing newspapers, he would yell out, extra, extra, read all about it. Y'all remember that? Amen. And so <laughs> this had even became a popular catchphrase in movies. Like whenever a movie would introduce an event, they would start off by saying, extra, extra read all about it to grasp people's attention, uh, to inform people or so that people would know that what you're about to hear is something that you don't typically hear about, okay? And so that was the old day of putting out additional news. In our day, we have what we call the internet. We have social media, we have television and other news outlets to help us stay informed with what's happening around the world. And so whenever anything special or out of the ordinary takes place now, there is a interruption of regular daily news and the event becomes what we call breaking news. So now it's breaking news. If you're ever watching TV and, and there is an event that takes place uh, across the screen, it will say what? Breaking news. And so that's what I want to talk about today. Breaking news. I have some breaking news for you today. I want to interrupt our regular schedule and overshadow all of our life daily events and provide for you this morning some breaking news. And breaking news is uh, newly received information about an event that is currently occurring or developing. Breaking news is the fresh news that is happening as we speak, amen. In our text, the gospel writer Luke gives us some breaking news. While everyone else was responding to the news of the census 
And while even these shepherds were staying out in the field and keeping watch over their flock by night, there was something bigger and better taking place in the same region. And Luke provides us a report of this breaking news. And so what does Luke report to us about this breaking news? Well, we already know, based upon the previous message, that a baby was born. We know that a baby was born, and this baby, uh, if I were to give this, uh, uh, if this was a news segment in the article of, of daily news or breaking events or, break, or headliners, I would call it a savior is born. So not only was a baby born because that was not nothing new. That was that was ordinary. But in this case, a baby was born and this baby's birth was miraculous. This was a virgin birth. This was a baby that was born to a virgin woman and a baby who was not born in a house or home or uh, born in a hospital, but this baby was born in a manger, born in a stable and not surrounded by doctors and family members, but it was surrounded by animals. So Luke gives us this detailed report that this, while all the rest of the world was, was getting ready to be counted for census and whatever else was going on around that time, and while these shepherds were in the field at night watching over the flock, something bigger, something better was happening. And so what ends up happening is it, it, it moves from Jesus' birth in the manger to this scene in verse 8 where the shepherds, we learn, become the first recipients of this breaking news. They're, they're watching over their flock, and then all of a sudden, an angel appeared, and it was almost like... Uh, we were watching television, and on the screen it says, breaking news. And an angel appeared before the shepherds, and their first response to it was, fear, what in the world is going on? And then he delivers them some breaking news. Now, there are a few things that I want to tell you about the news that he gave them. Uh, first thing we need to understand is that the news came from God. The breaking news came from God, but it was delivered by his angels, which are his messengers. So the first thing that Luke shares with us about this breaking news is that it came from God. It did not come from man. It did not come from the, the Jerusalem Gazette, but it, but it came from heaven. This news, this breaking news came to us live from heaven. So the first thing we learn about this breaking news that Luke reports is that it was news from God and it was delivered by the angels, his message. The second thing that we we learn about this breaking news that was delivered from God uh, by the angels is that it was good news. You see, so many times in our world, we hear a bunch of bad news. Every time you look at the news, it is depressing. When you're scrolling through social media and you see the headliners, it is most of the time seeming to be depressing heartbreaking news, but this news, this, this breaking news, this moment that God begins to speak through his angels, brothers and sisters, is good news. So this news is good news. Look at what the angel says to the 
shepherds in verse 10, it said, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you what? Good news. So whenever God begins to speak and God sends his messengers to speak to us, you better believe that God is bringing good news. And somebody might be going through something in your life right now. Maybe you're experiencing some storms and maybe you're going through some troubled times. But I want you to know today that there is good news. God is speaking and he has some good news for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Does not matter who you are. God has good news. Matter of fact, listen to this. The, what does Luke report about the breaking news? One, uh, it, it was news from God delivered by his angels. The second is it was good news. It was good news. And then the third thing is it is news that will bring you joy. Listen to what he says. Behold, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. So this news that God has for you, my brothers and sisters, is about to restore your joy. It is about to bring you joy. It is about to put a smile on your face. You've been walking around with a, with a frown all week long. But the good news that comes from God is going to put a smile on your face. It is going to bring you joy. It is going to bring you joy. Not only will it bring you joy, not only does this breaking news come from God, delivered by his messengers, but it's good news. And, and not only is it good news, but it's news that will bring you joy. And then also it is news that is for everybody. Listen to what he says. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. So when God sends his messenger from heaven and what God was doing in Bethlehem, the city of David on that night, on that day was to bring good news, was to bring joy. And it was for everybody. It will benefit everybody. And so this baby that was born to, to, to be the savior of the world. Remember I told you the headliner is a savior is born. And that means it just simply said that this baby was born to save us. This baby was born to bring salvation to the world. This baby was born to free us and to deliver us from eternal damnation. A baby was born. A savior is born. And it's for everybody. That, that's what I love about the good news. Is that it's not just for me. It's, it's not just for you, but it's, it's for everybody. And we are blessed to be able to hear the good news. <laughs> This breaking news this morning, somebody may not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. I want you to know this morning, in case you didn't know, that salvation is available. Salvation is available and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's available. So what does Luke report about this breaking news? One is we know that it is news from God. It is something that God has done and orchestrated through his messengers to be able to deliver the good news. Not only that, well, the breaking news, but also it is good news. That means it's good. It's not bad news. It's, it's good news. 
That means, you, you know, in the midst of hearing so many bad things going on in the world, you open your Bible so that you can get some good news. And then it will bring you joy. And it's for everybody. And so the angels delivered to the shepherds a message, a message of hope, a message of peace, a good message, a message that shows God's peaceful and good intentions for mankind, a, a, a message that shows that God has not given up on us, a, a message that, that, that tells us that God has not forgotten us. And, and it's amazing because if anybody knows this, that there was a period of 400 years of silence where God did not send a prophet or anything to speak to his people. And so at this moment, it's breaking news. It is awesome news because at this moment, God breaks his silence. And God is now speaking. And if you read the Hebrew writer, he said, God who in sundry times, mean God who in the past was speak through the prophets. But now in these days, he has spoken through his son, Jesus, and he sends a baby. Not what they were expecting. But he came in the form of a baby. Humility. And so the question is, what should we do with the breaking news? Because if we are the recipients of it, like the shepherds, they were the recipients of this news. You got to remember the census was taking place and everybody else was going on about business as usual and, and concerning themselves with the affairs of the world and their life. And while these shepherds were doing their normal thing, watching over their flock at night in the fields, their experience was interrupted by this breaking news. And so they were the recipients of this news. You and I are recipients of this news, this breaking news. We received it. We heard it. And so what should we do with the breaking news that is good, that brings joy and is for everyone? The shepherd took measures to do four things with it. The first thing they did was they received it. They received it. Look at verse 15. It says, uh, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began to say to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They received it. They didn't reject it, but they, they received it. And we know that they received it because they went to the second point to confirm it. So the first point is they received it. The second point is they confirmed it. And so you have to receive the message of God and then you have to confirm it. And how did they confirm it? They confirmed it by going to the place where the shepherds told them to go. And when they got to the place where the shepherds told them to go, they saw it exactly as the shepherd, I'm sorry, the angels uh, described it. And so when God says it, then you go confirm it and it should look exactly the way it is in God's word. So they received it. They didn't reject the good news. And it's a sad story that so many people in the world today are rejecting the gospel. They are rejecting the message of God. And I pity them. Because those people who reject the, the good news, they are disconnected from God. They are lost and astray. They are like sheep that are scattered without a shepherd. 
they are most pitiful of all men. I don't care what the hype in the world is. They are most pitiful of all men. And so when you receive the good news or when you hear the good news, the first thing is you got to receive it. And then second is you got to confirm it. Uh, verse 16, so they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. So they confirmed it. They received the good news. They confirmed the good news. And brothers and sisters, you will not be able to confirm what's in God's word if you don't um, attempt to apply it to your life. And so not only did they receive it, not only did they confirm it, but they also shared it. <laughs> they also shared it. Look at what verse 17 and 18 says. It says, when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. So they shared it. They shared it. And I like how Luke puts this. He said, they made known the statement that was told to them about the child. And so they took the same message that was given to them and related the same way. And so they shared it. So if you've heard the good news and you received the good news and you went and you confirmed the good news that it indeed is fact, it indeed has happened, then you ought to be faithful enough to go and share it with other people. That's where we get that song from, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. You got to go tell it, shout it. Everywhere you go, every believer who has received the gospel message and has confirmed that it's indeed fact and it's legit, you ought to go and share. You ought to be witnesses to God every single place you go. And let me remember uh, to tell you that these men were at work. They were in the middle of the fields watching over their flock. They left them there to go and be a witness to something that is greater and bigger to what than what they were doing at the moment. And that's why I told you last week, God's purpose trumps the plans of man. And, and, and they thought that it was more important, this news about this baby being born was more important than them watching sheep. They took a break, <laughs> clocked out went to Bethlehem, went to the place where Jesus was born, and they witnessed the baby wrapped in, laying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. They saw it with their own eyes. And I thank God that they saw it because now we have a witness and testimony in scripture about this event that took place. And we can't say that we wasn't there. It doesn't matter if we were there or not. It is we have the account of eyewitnesses, people who had seen it with their own eyes and can testify. We have the testimony of faithful witnesses who heard it, they received it, they went and confirmed it, and now they sharing it with us. So what are we going to do with it? My question today is, have you heard it? Yeah, you heard it. I know you heard it because I preached it to you. I preach it to you every Sunday. My second question for you, brothers and sisters, is have you received it? Have you received it in your heart? 
And, and, and then have you confirmed it? Do you know that you know that you know that you know that Jesus is real? Do you know that the word of God is the truth and there is no lie? I don't care how many times they tell you what well, man wrote the Bible and, and sometimes they just write it to their advantage. And, or maybe sometimes they make mistakes of some of the stuff that they've written in the Bible. And we'll allow these false teachers to come in and say, you know, they tamper with that stuff. You can't believe everything that they say. But yet and still, they read books that are not holy or sacred scriptures, and yet they believe everything that they read in books. Have you received it? Have you confirmed it, brothers and sisters? And are you sharing it? Are you sharing it? It says, and all who heard it wondered at the things which were told to them by the shepherds. And it's amazing to me that it goes from being uh, the angels being the messengers to now the shepherds being the messengers. It, it's amazing to me that it, it begins with the angels being the bearers of good news and of this breaking news to now the shepherds being the heirs of it and, and, and being the bearers of this good news. And so how do we do this? What do we do? I, I think, brothers and sisters, when you get off this, this, this line, this service today, that you ought to run through your house and shout breaking news. You, you ought to run through your house shouting extra, extra, read all about it, and, and you, you just share the news of Jesus Christ, because I guarantee you, ain't nothing happening in your house that's more important than this. I guarantee you ain't nothing happening in your job that's more important than this breaking news. You ought to show up to work tomorrow yelling extra, extra, read all about it. I got some breaking news. Jesus Christ was born. He's the reason for the season. And he's born Savior. He's Christ the Lord. That means he has been chosen and anointed to be a ruler. He's a baby. He's God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. He's God in the flesh. That means God's with us. And so many people are looking for job, looking for God, brother Deacon Ray, but they don't realize he's already here. He's with us. God is with us. <laughs> he's with us. And the song says there's nobody greater. Nobody greater than him. I searched all over. Still, I couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low and still can't find nobody. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater than Jesus Christ. I'm telling y'all, the biggest and greatest thing that ever happened for humanity is the birth of this baby, Jesus. And this season, I don't want you to get caught up in the, in the, in the eggnog. I don't want you to get caught up in the Jack Daniel mix with eggnog. I, I don't want you to get caught up in the candy canes and the Christmas trees. I don't want you to get caught up in the mistletoes and, and all of that stuff. I don't want you to get caught up at the job Christmas parties and, and, and even your family gatherings. I don't want you to get caught up in that stuff. I want you to get caught up in Jesus. I want you to do like these shepherds. Spend some time reflecting on Jesus, remembering Jesus and talking about Jesus. If you really, really want to know how to celebrate Christmas, all you need is a choir and a, a messenger, amen, and somebody who's celebrating his name. That's all you need. You don't need gifts. You don't need it. All that money we're going to spend this year on Christmas, you know how it is. We, we get broke during Christmas and we waiting on that income tax to come to get us out of that debt that we got ourselves in in Christmas because we go all out. But we forget about Jesus. We forget about Jesus. It's like showing up to somebody's birthday party and taking over and you don't even acknowledge the person whose birthday it is. And you take over it like it's your party. 
don't forget about Jesus. He is the reason for the season. He, if you look in these scriptures, you don't see no other form of celebration. The wise man brought gifts, but guess who the gifts were for? The gifts were for Jesus. And the only gift that we need for Christmas is Jesus. He was the gift that God gave to everybody. So if anybody asks you, what are you going to get them for Christmas? I used to say the same thing I got you last year, and that was nothing. But if anybody asks you, what are you going to get me for Christmas? I'm going to ask them, do you have Jesus? You remember that song, All I Want for Christmas? We sang, All I Want for Christmas is my two front teeth. All I want for Christmas this year is Jesus. Jesus. That's breaking news, brothers and sisters. That's, that's the news. And so they received it. So what do you do with the breaking news? You receive it, you confirm it, you share it, and finally you cherish it. You cherish it, brothers and sisters. You cherish this good news that has been given to you. And the word of God says that uh, verse 18, and all who heard it wondered at the things which were told to them by the shepherds. And I'm wondering today, are you leaving people wondering about the message of hope? Are you leaving people wondering about God's word? And it says in verse 19, if we go a little further, it says, but Mary treasured all these things in her heart. She pondered on them. And we ought to cherish this moment. We ought to cherish this scripture. We ought to cherish this news. We got to always be thanking God. And the Bible says in verse 20 that the shepherds went back they went back to where they were working, but they went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen just as it had been told to them. And, and so just to remind you, what was it that the angels told them? It says that uh, on this day in the city of David, there has been a savior born for you who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find him, a, find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And then just the excitement of this news, this breaking news, you can you, you know, you know, you got all of the lights and 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 all of the cameras and all of this going on in Hollywood, and then we just see the glory of the Lord is just light within itself. And it was nighttime. I want you to picture this. They are working at night, and it probably was the most boring job. Uh, can you imagine just sitting there watching over sheep? all night long in a field and all of a sudden one angel shows up to you and you get a little startled because it was unexpected and that's just how God moves. He just moves in an unexpected way. He shows up to deliver you some good news at a moment in your life when you least expect it. And then this one angel delivered them some good news. And then the other angel said, no, nah, I can't let him go tell that news all by himself. We got to join. And then all of a sudden the heavenly choir came down from heaven and began to shine all. Can you imagine you being in the midst that? I think the shepherds had one of the greatest experience that any man can ever uh, go through in life. Can you imagine the being there that night when the angels began to shine their light and shine the glory of God all around them? Uh, it was one angel at first, and then now it became the heavenly choir and the, the heavenly host all surrounding them. And verse 13 says, and suddenly there appeared with them an angel, the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising 
and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And so there's one thing that I gather from this is that the angels were excited about the message that they were delivering. And they were so excited about it that even themselves uh, felt the blessing of the message. And I wonder today, are you excited about the message that you are sharing? And that you're so excited that you got to come down or you got to, to be anxious about going to share with others. Because we know that these shepherds were anxious about going to see it. Because the word said, they say, let us go and, and, and witness for ourselves this great news that has been given to us. And the Bible said, and they heard it. That's the breaking news, brothers and sisters. That's the breaking news that, that a child was born for us. And this child was born, Christ the Lord, the anointed one, the chosen one, whom scriptures prophesied about and said that he would come. And it was just as the Bible had stated it. And so we know that it's true because it came to fulfillment. This was a fulfillment of the promises that God made, not just for us, but for all humanity, that he wanted to bring joy to the world. And he had come to bring peace, not only with him and us, but peace with humanity, because in our world, there is so much war, there is so much chaos in our world, and there is so much hatred and bitterness and people holding on to grudges and will not forgive. But God said, I come to be a peacemaker. I brought my child to bring peace on earth and my goodwill to be done among all men. In other words, God loved the world so much. He loves everybody in the world. There is nobody in this world that God dislikes. He loves everybody. And he's given us today a message of hope, breaking news, Nevaeh, that Jesus was born. And he is Christ the Lord. He is Savior of the world. And the good news for us is that we don't have to die in our sins. All we have to do is accept him into our heart. Uh, as Lord and Savior, and he will give us salvation. That's the good news. That's what Christmas is all about. And it's not about the other things. Christmas is all about Jesus, worshiping him, bowing down before him, kneeling before him, singing praises into his name. That's how you celebrate Christmas. That's it. That's how you celebrate Christmas. That's my breaking news today, brothers and sisters. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.
Amen. Can't keep it to myself. Amen. It's too good to keep to myself. Amen. You know how we spread gossip around? And any gossipers on here today? Any any gossipers? Y'all ain't got y'all got your cameras off, so I can't see anyway. Any gossipers? Amen. We need some gospels. We need some people to to spread the good news as fast as the bad news. It's our world is so backwards. We, we're quick to pass and talk about all the bad things that are happening in the world. But in the midst of all this bad, something good is going on. Every Sunday, good news is being spread from somebody's pulpit. Amen. And we ought to praise God for the good news because it's not just for us, but it's for the entire world. And so we got to take it and we got to go out there and share it. And so God bless you again and keep you as my prayer. I pray that the word really, really inspired you today. Uh, I had fun delivering it. And so uh, God touched my heart when he gave it to me. So, <laughs> Amen. So uh, I hope it was good for you as it was for me. <laughs> Amen. So as we prepare to uh give our offering. Uh, we want to thank those of you who've already had given uh, this week uh, via online or or cash app or however you give. Uh, we want to thank you in advance uh, for giving. Thank you for always being faithful. Uh, the link is in the uh, chat here for you to give if you need it. Um, to, uh, to do it, but be delivered to your phone, text the word give to the uh, connect number and the link will be uh, messaged to your phone. Uh, also on yesterday, we launched a, a building pledge for 2024. We sent out an email uh, with that pledge and the different amounts that you can uh contribute uh, throughout next year. So we just want to remind you uh, about the pledge uh, that if you could fill the form out and then take a picture of it and text it to us uh, so that we can add your pledge into the system and begin to uh, uh, make contributions on our pledge. Those of you who don't want to wait on the form, you can, you, can, you don't have to necessarily wait to get be able to print the form, you could uh, text me uh, that you desire to make a pledge, and this is the amount that you want to try to uh, give throughout the year. Okay, and again, these pledges are uh, doesn't take the place of our regular giving. Uh, this is in addition to. Okay. So, uh, and you can give them separate, give your regular giving uh, separately, and then your pledge amount, you can do that differently in a separate uh, transaction, okay? So, um, bless you all. Good again to see so many of y'all. Good to see the Granada's family. Um, we're praying for you guys. Uh, pray for me this week that I can become refreshed I am off uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I have some relaxed time. I have to finish a couple of homework assignments for school, and then I'm done for the semester. And so I'm, I'm just looking forward to relaxing. So if nothing else, um, any announcements or anything, First Lady or anybody? Today is the, de the de deadline for um for the ladies um who's gonna <clears throat> I'm sorry who's gonna go on the outing on Saturday to the Holiday Lights in Sugarland at the Constellation Field. We are meeting at five o'clock for that. Um, I did receive um some of the ladies um monies because I'm gonna purchase the tickets tomorrow. Um, so today is the deadline to send that if I will send a reminder in the women's um group me chat just just to remind those who's, who would like to go and I think that's it that's it for us okay all right well if nothing else let us um uh, 
bow our heads for uh, our closing prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for just a message of joy, a message of hope, a message of love and peace. God, we thank you for speaking to us and reminding us how much you love us, reminding us, Father, to make sure that we don't forget about the greatest gifts, and that's love, joy, peace, Father, kindness, and generosity, and so many other things, God. I pray, God, that we don't get so wrapped up in ourselves that we forget about you. And so, God, help us to remember you. Help us to cherish the moments that you give us and the families that you give us, Father, and the work that you give us to do. God, help us cherish them and to give you praise and honor for them. For without you, God, none of this is possible. And so let this word not just go in one ear and out the other, but let us apply it. Let us determine today, let us re renew our commitment today, Father, to share the good news, to be witnesses of your truth and your love and your glory and your honor, Father, so that men may begin to call upon your name, that they too may receive grace and salvation for their soul. As we leave this service, God, I pray that your spirit will be with us everywhere we go and that we will represent you, Father, in the, in the spirit of truth, Father, and righteousness. We love you, God. We thank you for all that you do for us. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling, may he present us faultless before his throne. And until we all meet again, we say together, amen. 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 Amen.